often if somebody's on social media, they see a lot of people saying, I can do X, I can do X, I can do X. But mm -hmm. what people really want to know is, can you do X either with me, for me, or empower me? Welcome to the Jasmine Star Show, where today we are going to have a special episode. I had the opportunity to speak to podcast host, brand photographer, and educator, Angie McPherson. We talked about longevity. We talked about creating not just fans, but evangelists for your business. We talked about what a customer journey looks like and how do you have people stay with you with every iteration of your business. And then we got really deeply personal. She shared how we first met. She shared how and why she stays in contact with my business, and then she how she made a very big investment decision to go deep with my business. I hope you enjoy because she definitely spilled the tea. Jasmine is a CEO, world-class speaker, thought leader, podcast host, mom, wife, and just an inspiration to hundreds of thousands of entrepreneurs, including me. And we've seen so many pivots in your business. And like me, I was buying your $12 digital downloads 10 years ago. And as recent as last year, I mean, I, I think I've probably invested in every single thing that you put out there. Like I'm like a long time fan client. And last year I invested in your mastermind and I was like, Jasmine, I want to have you on and have you talk to my audience about how to create needs in your business. <laughs> like long-term clients who no matter what you're putting out there, see the value and everything and how we can move their business forward. I don't know what you can't do. Everything I listed, you've, you've done it all. And so I just want to talk about how we can create those long-term fans and clients in your business. Okay, but can we can we go real, real, real quick? <laughs> yeah. Okay, because you said, Jasmine, you know, over a decade ago, I was buying these $10 downloads yeah. that yeah. you were selling as photographer resources. Yeah. yeah. And then you said, I've bought basically everything that you put out, including your mastermind. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to get real, real, <laughs> you and I, uh, you were in my mastermind yeah, and yeah. we were out to dinner in the group. <laughs> and I like to I like to float at different seats so that I can talk to everybody. Uh -huh. And so then you and I end up sitting next to each other. And then you tell me about the conversation that you and your husband had before you were going to invest in the mastermind. So why don't we just start there? Like let's, we need to let's, have like we're getting let's real. Start there. Let's keep it all the way real. So keep in mind, like I said, you've had products from twelve dollars. 997. I think I've done, you know, I've done social curator for, for since the beta group, like so many different points of investments. And you told me you were launching a mastermind. And I told my husband, I was like, Sean, I don't care what it costs. I have to invest in this. I've invested in everything she's done and it just comes back 300, 400%. And he's like, okay, well, how much is it? With, within our marriage and my business, I usually don't run any investments by him <laughs> unless it's like ridiculous. But this one, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to have to tell him. And so he, I said, well, what do, you, what do you guess? What do you guess? And he's like, oh, you know, I'm thinking $5,000. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> yikes. <laughs> I'm like, okay, bro. And this was, he guessed this before you put it out there. But I knew, I knew it was not going to be $5,000. And the email came out. I saw the price. <laughs> Showed him the price. And I don't think I've ever seen his eyes go that big. So let's just, let's drop the number. Let's drop the number. You want to drop the number? $25,000. That's right. I didn't blink. No, I did not stutter. $25,000. By far the biggest investment I think I've ever made. I think the biggest before that I've done was like $10,000 for maybe like a year mastermind and his eyes just glazed over and you know what as as i don't want to say cheap as he is because he's not cheap he's frugal <laughs> as frugal as he is he did not try to talk me out of it he said okay well how, how are you going to make it work like how are you going to make it work and literally and this is how i this is how i do my investments it's not like oh no how can i afford this it's how how can I afford this? How can I make this happen? You know, literally the next day I launched a branding photography retreat. <laughs> I found a house on Airbnb. I put it out to a wait list and I sold it out within 12 hours. This is how you make things happen. When you know something is valuable, you literally just make it happen. Whether you, you know, and this, this podcast is for all types of entrepreneurs and so not just photographers, but whether you book a shoot, whether you um, do mini sessions, whether you work one-on-one -on -one with a client, anytime I see an investment and I'm like, okay, how can I make this work? 
I just make it work. I literally figure out a way to make it work. And it was a very, very scary investment. It was so worth it. And I literally made the investment back and then some within four months. The biggest investment, but the best investment ever. One thing about you, Angie, is that you and I have this in common. Yeah. yeah. It is not how can I afford this, period. Because right, right. the like the inflection, the inflection is how can I afford that? Right, right. Mm-hmm. And the way that you and I have learned to ask that is with a question mark. Mm-hmm. How can I afford this? Right. Exactly. And then you're like, great. Now we went from a dead end thinking, well, how could I ever to how could I ever afford right. this? Let's go. <laughs> and so I think that that's, that's what a, a very telling point mm-hmm. to the people that I attract in my yes. orbit. And yeah. so we had the conversation about, well, how, how does, how does Angie attract more Angie's in her business? Mm -hmm. How does anybody attract an Angie into their business? Right. right. And, you know, I have to say that more than, more than anything, and I've heard this told about myself. And so I want to be like, I want to make sure that I'm very aware that people have said, you know, uh, to, to a person holding a hammer, everything's a nail. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I, when I look at myself, it's like, your girl is like, what, what is that? Like Arvin Decker or hammer? What what is like, what is the Decker brand? Like Decker and Decker, whatever. Yeah. I don't don't use tools, but whatever. There's some famous Decker hammer and (laughs) I'm basically like the gold, like the gold plated version of that. Like I am very much a hammer. And so people will say, well, Jasmine's responses to everything is content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Maybe to me, everything looks like a nail. I can own that. Right. But what I will say is the thing that has attracted and kept people like you and like others mm-hmm. in the orbit has been content. And I feel so sure of that answer because I actually haven't done anything else. Right. right. Now, now that, that is a blessing and a curse. Like, I wonder what could I have done to kept or attract other people, but for the lifespan? Like mm-hmm. you and I met at four different iterations of my career. Right, yeah, you have yeah. gone with the business every single point of that. And the way that that has happened, Angie, is uh, we don't pick up the phone and call each other. Mm-hmm. We don't We don't have regular conversations. I mean, we DM, right. but as far as regularity goes, it is a, it is a direction that content flows from me to you, mm-hmm. from me to you. And occasionally you'll engage back. Right. And then occasionally- You'll be putting out content and you'll start realizing that there's going to be a group of people who follow you. So when we like focus the conversation of how do we create not just fans, people who like us or what we do, but how do we create evangelists? Right. And that's a very big difference because Mm -hmm. the people who are evangelists in any business, well, they're they're They are your gold mines. And I can look at you in this podcast and say, you're a gold mine. And so let's let's have that conversation. Yeah. What is it that you would like to know? Knowing I've already called myself out, I'm a golden <laughs> hammer, but we can actually distill down more of what yeah. do we need to do in order to attract more people who aren't just fans, but evangelists. I love that. I love it. And my question is, I would love to know the type of research you do because we, like you said, we have touched points at different iterations. What type of research do you do to see, oh, this person is now in this stage and this is what this person needs as far as content in this stage versus two, three years ago? How do you, how do you find that in your audience? Um, so this is the, a pretty significant difference is I don't look for it in the audience. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I create from where I'm at. Right. And so as I continuously evolve, mm-hmm. the question I'm asking is, what did I need to know five years ago mm. that I wish I knew? Or, you know, what do I wish I knew two years ago? Right. What do I wish I knew two years ago or five years ago that I could be creating content about? Now, here's the beautiful thing is, Angie, along with my evolution, you have evolved. Right. As people are growing along my uh, along my brand, they themselves are growing. There Now there's a group of people who didn't evolve alongside me. Not that that's good or bad, mm-hmm. but... I never said, hey, how can I create content for that person? It simply became, how do I create content? Because uh, content for the previous version of me, Rory Vaden said it best. He says, you are most powerfully suited to serve a version of who you once were. 
Mm -hmm. And so all of us, you know, instead of me, like, I want to go after that person. But if I don't actually know that person, I don't really understand their pressure points. It's going to come off as like thirsty, desperate, (laughs) uh, different, uninformed. Mm -hmm. But I know who I was two years ago and I know my struggle points five years ago. And so that is the current answer. But let's get into like the brass tacks of it. At this point in time, at as us having this conversation is I am not foolish enough to believe that my journey looks like everybody else's journey. Right. But I knew I do know the journey getting to a million dollars in your business mm-hmm. becomes a very different pressure point for the people who are trying to scale from one million to 10 million. Right. Because that yeah. that growth path from, you know, zero to a million is hard. You yeah. are just going to do so you're going to wear so many hats in your business. You're going to do all the things you might be able to get away with one or two virtual assistants. Mm-hmm. You can get away to a million. Then when you reach that inflection point of a million, what normally happens with a lot of the data and research that I have been doing pretty extensively mm-hmm. is you will either burn yourself out because you're burning the wick at both ends. Yeah. yeah. Or you get to a point to where your VAs are doing as much as they can, but without you managing every part of the puzzle piece, you're still going to be in the business and you're not going to be working on the business. Right. right. And right, so right. up and through this, up into this point in my career, I feel like I've been doing a lot of content for that zero to a million. Mm-hmm. And so as I've evolved and as the business has grown and so many things have changed that I started asking myself, well, what did I need from that journey, you know, past one, two, three, four, five million. What were those things that I needed at that point in time? So now right. I find myself creating content for that. But here's the, the the main, main point that I want anybody to take over is when you are actually creating content for a future offer, even if you don't know what that offer is quite yet, it's mm-hmm. going to be so important that you test your assumptions. And so right now, what I have done, and, done, and this is super scrappy, but you know, Angie, like, I don't, I, listen, I want to be high class. I want to be luxury. You know, it's like, I, I literally, I literally would love, 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 you know, to be like a G6, but I'm out here like a class on Southwest, but it's all good. We're still getting love there. It. We're still getting there. And so what I have done is like, how do I start talking to other seven figure entrepreneurs mm-hmm. to actually see if my hypothesis of the struggle from one to five and one to seven actually is true. Right. And so that that market research is really difficult because any business owner who starts any business that you have only 4% of business owners will ever cross a million dollars wow and of that 4% 0. 0.7 of them are women wow and then of that 0. 0.7% 0. 0.2 or 0. 0.3 are women of color mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so when i'm trying to do research finding 4% of people to talk to in all of the entrepreneurs it's actually a lot more difficult. So I just <laughs> right. took to resources and platforms. So I really started focusing heavily on LinkedIn mm-hmm. and heavily on my existing audience and Instagram. So I just started going over to people's profiles. And actually, some people actually say I'm a seven figure entrepreneur or I built multi million dollar revenue streams. So right. I started following them. I started engaging. And then I was like, you want to know what I want to do? I want to get research, but it seems a little creepy if I'm just going to like reach out to you and be like, Hey, can right. I chat with you about how you built your business? That uh-huh. sounds weird. And so what I decided to do is in the future, I'll be creating a series, um, chronicling the stories and journeys of seven figure entrepreneurs on my podcast. I love that. So I reached out to these people and I was like, I'm getting data. I want to know people's struggles and journeys. And so then I said, oh, would you be willing to have a 15 minute conversation? But what am I really doing? Research and development. Right. And so I just send a calendar link and then there are certain days of the month that I'm just like, I'm going to talk, 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 talk. And so my calendar looks like a zebra, right? It's like, <laughs> I'm just going in and all I'm doing is asking three questions. And the reason why I'm sharing the three questions is because, you know, when people listen to your podcast, I don't want them just learning. I actually want them doing, Taking I want action. them doing. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. first question is what has been the greatest way that you have scaled your business past two or $3 million? I love that. What has been the thing that hasn't yielded the best ROI? Like maybe you wish you had done differently or just wasn't worth your time or money. And then number three, if I am your Latina fairy grandmother (laughs) and I can grant any wish that Uh will help you scale past 10 million. And here's the thing. It doesn't have to make sense. You can make up the craziest thing. It doesn't have to make sense. But if I can grant you your wish, what do you think is going to scale you past 10 million? Mm -hmm. Those three questions will give you so much information about what people have loved, what do they need and what do they actually want? Right. Because nobody sits there and says, you know what I really want? But actually, when you start imagining, you know what? And I started realizing there are very distinct patterns, very distinct patterns between the entrepreneurs between two and five 
and then five and 10. Mm -hmm. And so now it's my job to start distilling that information and then start saying, well, where's the gap? And can I create something to fill that gap? I love that. I love that because there have been points in my business where I think, and, and many people can relate, where you have offers out there and you feel like, you know, this is it. Like this, these are all the offers I have. I just need to get new people into my business. And you're talking about doing this research and development and, and seeing how you can help people even, you know, more than you already are and at different stages in their business. And let me just have to say this. You have given me the best business advice ever. It was at the first time I met you in person it was at the social curator event. You did a giveaway um, from your members. I won. It was like the highlight of my career. And I was telling you, I was like, you know what? People are asking a lot of questions about brand photography. And you said, you need to buy where the land is cheap and build a high rise. And I wrote that in my notebook and I still have that notebook. And I look at it all the time. Every time I'm thinking about a different offer or a different um, concept or perspective or, or something, I'm just like, okay, where's the land cheap right now? How can I bring my influence and impact and, and value and build a high rise? And that's when I pivoted into education. I didn't even have an idea of pivoting into education. I was just doing a lot of free content, didn't know what was coming. And like you said, you might not know what's coming, but still create the content and do that research and development. So I love this because it makes me want to take some time this year and think about that photographer who wants to go to the next level and what I can create for them. So I love that. Absolutely. Love that. It's a different revenue stream. But, you know, I want to be I want to have two points of clarification. Number one is I'm a big fan of a product suite. Right. Because mm -hmm. it's easier to sell to somebody who's already bought from you. Statistically, right, right. I mm -hmm. think it's like obscene. It's like more than 50 percent. Like if somebody's right. already bought from you, there's a much higher likelihood. And so then you have an opportunity, not just you as an entrepreneur, but as anybody's looking at their business and they look at a product suite, there's going to be needs as people progress throughout right, right. their journey. Mm -hmm. And what you just said is, oh, I see the next step in their journey. I think yeah. I can create something for that possibly, right? right. But what I want to be very clear is, is we don't want to build out. And this is not something for you yeah. because yeah. I know your journey. I know your business. And I absolutely know that whatever you put out is going to slap because <laughs> you put in so much time in building up the programs. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, what I see a lot of is like, well, I can have this program. And right. then I can have this one and then I'm gonna do this and then it's gonna be a membership and then I'm gonna switch here. But what happens is if we don't actually spend time to, to build out the systems for each offer, right. then we're gonna be doing, uh, we're gonna be building a lot of short ladders. And mm -hmm. so one, I just really wanna give you your flowers because what you've done with your program is that you've drilled it down. You have the journey, you have the transformation, you know how it sells, you know your conversion rates, you know what your list building, you have those things. And so now that that's in place, we can actually hire somebody on to come into your team and really take over the tasks that don't need Angie. Angie's right. system works. We just need a mini Angie within the business to make sure that <laughs> right. the ball is moving down the line. And then we got to get all of Angie's magic and power at building mm -hmm. the next offer in the product suite because nobody can do that. You're the only person in your business who could build out that next offer, at least right. right now. My dream in the future is to build out a team who sees the demands, who creates the offers. And I'm like, oh, I could see this. And like, mm. let's start running with those things. I'm not there yet, but I could see the future of that existing. And right now you and I are in the position mm -hmm. to be, we're going to lead these new projects, but we're going to make sure that we're replacing ourselves in the business. We want to work ourselves out of a job so that we have upward expansion. I love that. Work ourselves out of a job. I love that. I, I want to I wanna touch on your your pivots. You've had such a, an amazing entrepreneurial journey. I mean, from wedding photographer, courses, uh, you know, SaaS company, and there's just so many different pivots in your business. What what kind of comes up for you when you feel like, okay, it's time to do something new or pivot or create something different? Is there something that internally comes to you? Do you get inspired by something? Is there like a time limit where you're like, okay, I've, I've done this for five years. This sounds great. Like what, what is the secret to you moving on to something bigger and better? I will say that it hasn't looked the same mm -hmm. at yeah. all in every iteration, but I can right. say that around year five, something happens. Mm -hmm. It's either that I see um, a gap in my current market, right. Right. a gap in my business that kind of like sparks something as an extension that's yeah. happened. Um, I've also noticed um, an energetic heaviness. When things start feeling energetically heavy, that mm. once gave me so much life, it's a very clear sign that I need to either rekindle the love affair that I had with building this particular division or arm of my business, mm -hmm. and how might I do that? Or I need to start building something else.
I have gone through gap in the market, gap in my business and like a just shift, like a thing that happens that's so clear. It's time. Yeah, It is yeah. absolutely time for me to change. I feel that. I think that's where I was when I pivoted from wedding photography to branding photography. I was like, okay, it, it's time. It's time. Um, I love that because I, I get a lot of questions from people saying, you know, I'm, I want to either pivot it into a different niche of photography, or I want to start doing online products. And, and, and people are, you know, sometimes they're just scared to try something new because something has just worked for so long yeah. and they're just, they're fearful of, you know, putting eggs in, in one basket and going all in on something, which is usually how I move, <laughs> kind of risky. But um, so, so what can you say to those people listening who who might be sitting on that fence? Like, I want to try something new, but I'm just so scared it won't work. Um, well, number one, I'm deeply empathetic to that. That is the way that I saw the world. And mm -hmm. I believe, and I have experienced that the only way I've been able to have like 10 X jumps in my life and business is when I, refocused or actually re-realized my frame of reality. I had mm -hmm. to break what I thought was my reality. And sometimes the breaking, and most oftentimes the breaking feels scary and painful and very unsure. But in order for us to actually see the same situation from different potential, we actually have to be like slapped awake as a result right. of it. Yeah. And so what mm -hmm. I have realized is now I'm listening so much more intuitively to, oh, I'm seeing a gap in the market. I'm seeing a gap in the business or I'm just feeling an energetic weight. And I used to think it had to be an all or nothing. But mm -hmm. over the years, I've realized that when the systems are tight enough and locked in, you can replace yourself in that arm of the business. Mm. And so a uh, year and ago, a year and a half ago, we placed a president on the inside of Social Curator. And what Katie has done has just been so whip smart that the yeah. systems existed. Now, there's still things that I can only do inside of Social Curator, but there was a lot of things I didn't have to do. It's systematized. And so by her putting her in there, it is literally, quite honestly, opened up 90% for me to start building and working on other things. Wow. And so guess what? The business is still going. And mm -hmm. isn't that the dream of any entrepreneur would right. still be able not to feel like, oh, I have to sacrifice this revenue arm. Do you, or can right. you find a really powerful operator, pay them well, bonus mm -hmm. them on performance, and still you're allowed and empowered to do other things without saying, okay, I need to jump from one ship to another. Why don't we just create an entire armada? Right. Uh, I've seen Social Curator from the beta, like literally, Girl. I remember, I, remember I think I got an email from, from JD for the PayPal for $20. It was like a PayPal invoice. I was oh like, are, are, are we really getting that ugly? We're getting that ugly. Oh, this is a story. This is a story that very few people even know. In the beginning, we we're like, we're not sure this thing's going to work. And we were not even about commitment. We're like, uh -huh. oh, you know, like if we do it a couple months and it's not a thing, it's all good. We didn't even have a payment system. We were sending links one by one to people. Oh, that was so ugly. Oh, that was so ugly. But I just have to tell people is um, when we're talking about cultivating evangelists, mm -hmm. right? Because this is the point. The point yeah. of this conversation yeah. is to serve other people and actually get super tactile is um, when you know you have an evangelist mm -hmm. as a CEO, as an entrepreneur, as a brand builder, it's going to be very important that they know they're different, that they mm -hmm. know they're special. And so I, what you, you and I, I was speaking at an event mm -hmm. and the event was going and due to a very busy week and a very busy schedule, I had agreed, but I said, Hey, I got to land in and I got to, I got to take off right after. Right. And so uh, you and I were DMing and you said, mm -hmm. I'll see you at the event. And I was like, I'll see you on the main stage. And then you had said, if there's any time at all, can we connect? And I knew, and this is what happens is sometimes if I get off stage and I'm in the back of the room or in the hallway, people mm -hmm. will leave the event and there, it feels very rude to me because the person who's hosting <laughs> the event, I'm having a group meeting on the, oh, on the outside. So I was like, no, you can't, you can't be that person. Like mm -hmm. you know, respect. And so I was like, Hey, I'm going to be going out like the, the delivery entrance in the back of the hotel. Can right. you meet me right outside of the valet to the right? And so we had like this meetup, mm -hmm. but I needed to know, I needed you to know. That yeah. like you understood that I was one, not trying to be disrespectful to the event for right, having right. me. And mm -hmm. number two, be really respectful. Like you're important to me. And like, mm -hmm. I want to make time for a photo, a quick catch up. And so when we talk about how do we make people feel seen? Well, for yeah. the people who are key players in your life, your story, your origin, you want to make time for them because it pays back tenfold. And that's just Absolutely. being like the real, real about cultivating relationships with evangelists. 
Absolutely. And I, and I love how you, you do that directly too. I remember before you were launching the um, mastermind, you reached out via DM and said that it was coming. And you even said that I would like your ideal client for this. And that sentence alone, I, that's what I told my husband. I was like, it's, it's a wrap. It's happening because she's, she sees it in me. She sees that this is going to be super valuable for me, that I'm ready for this. Like you're just you reaching out and, and saying that, like, I didn't care what it cost. Like I would have sold a body part. I don't know. It, it would have. It would have happened. Happened. Um, hands down. And 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 so I I took that and I do that as well with a lot of my students who I just see their potential and I see that they can grow with me and I see that for example the retreat I reached out to people who I knew would just kill it who who would come have a great time who would find value in it and I just I I feel like I learned that from you just speaking that into me I'm like oh. We can actually tell our ideal clients that they are ideal clients. Like, done deal, done deal. Like, let's take that apart, though, because I really want us to be nitty gritty about this. I want somebody listening and being like, oh, because um, I sent you DM and I said, you know, I I really do think that you're going to be perfect for this. Mm -hmm. And that was no BS. That was just my truth. But the story I told myself was. That's a little big ghetto. That's a little ghetto being like, hey, you know, it's like I'm one step away from sending you a PayPal link uh, again. But you're so unattached. You're so unattached to the result. And you'll say that too. You'll be like, hey, like, you know, I'm just so, it's not like a sell at all. It's just like, hey, girl, like girl, this is I happening. happening. I think it's great. I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't find it any part of a sleazy. I was like, honor. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, one, I don't, you know, um, to be clear, I don't think it was sleazy, but I did yeah, feel yeah. like it's a little ghetto, right? Like, <laughs> It just is. Or at least that's the thing. At least that's what I was telling myself. Uh But like, let's just strip that away now. Because Mm -hmm. what happened was something was modeled for you. You went and deployed the same model for people. And Mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I'm getting good results. And I was like, okay, well, this seems good. And we can kind of hide behind the banner or the barrier, the shield that like we're ghetto, but we're fabulous at the same time. (laughs) But at the end of the day, there are things and ways that people are moving now that is very different because Mm -hmm. social media has allowed us essentially to have a megaphone, to have a Mm -hmm. very big waterfall to have a big opportunity, a big platform to to say, I am going to do X. This is for any mm-hmm. business owner. I can do X. But right. often if somebody's on social media, they see a lot of people saying, I can do X. I can do X. I can do X. But mm-hmm. what people really want to know is, can you do X either with me, for me, or empower me? Right. And so that was going on as a narrative. And then like three months ago, two months ago, I got a, a personal email from a C the COO of Vayner media. Mm. Now he did the same thing I did to you. He yep, said, yep. Jasmine, we have a leadership and growth accelerator. It's going to be $50,000 for three months. I think you're a perfect fit. And here's why. And let me tell you, if I would have seen Gary Vaynerchuk make that offer or James Orsini make that offer, I would have been like, okay, cool. Maybe. Mm-hmm. But the fact that he said, I see it for you because of this. And I was just like, yeah, I didn't even know it was 50,000 at the time, but I was just like, I'm going to do this because Perfect. they see something in me. And I mm-hmm. feel like from a very sales tactical perspective, now this can't be BS. You can't be right. sending a thousand people, you of know, course. for 10 seat coaching program, but you got to go to them. You have to have an established relationship with them. You and I had had an established relationship for right. years. James and I have had an established relationship for three years and it mm-hmm. was cultivated over time. And so I just kind of wanted to make sure that we put a line in this end and say, there is a way that it has been done. And then there's a way that we have deployed on and it works. And we used to say, oh, well, you know, just us being scrappy. But then we see, you know, a hundred, two hundred million dollar company doing the same thing via email. Exactly. We're on to something. Yeah, you know? we are. <laughs> we are. If you all take anything away from this conversation, it is that right there. Because at different levels of your business, it, it works. It's authentic. And like you said, these are people that you know that would benefit from this and that you have a relationship with. This isn't just you going down a hashtag and sending messages. These are people that you have true connections with. Um, Jasmine, before we part, can I do a quick game with you? Just a really quick game. It's <laughs> okay. because, we're, because we're talking about loyal client base, you know, dedicated customer base. I want to ask you a couple of different categories of what you are a loyal client customer or member of <laughs> so girl my loyalty's got loyalty i'll still go to the same gas station because i have a loyalty card it's so stupid it is so stupid okay i want to play i want to play i got a couple so the first one is a musical artist like who do you have to listen to you don't care what you know they put out you're listening to it 
I know. Girl, I'm so cheesy. I'm so cheesy. But like my go to um, would be Fleet Foxes. You probably don't even know who I know. I know you might not even like don't just don't sleep. Like these brothers be sad. They be singing on like folk music. But like, let me tell you, when it comes to writing and creative and going deep and like Mm -hmm. getting deep work, it's Fleet Foxes. I don't care what record you just put it on. And it's like, oh, I'm about to start crying. I'm about to start writing. You get Fleet Foxes. I got to go to Spotify. I got to go to Spotify for that one. You're probably going to hate it. And I don't care. Okay, what about a TV show that you are loyal to, no matter how crazy it can get? Um, girl, I don't really watch TV, but I will say I binged on the Dallas Cowboys documentary of them oh. making the team. I just sat on that couch and I said, "Everybody, <laughs> let me be. I'm gonna be a burrito on this couch. Let me be." I sat down. I was like, "I am dedicated hours mm-hmm. watching this show." But let me tell you, mm-hmm. I'm all about the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders now. I remember that. they used to have a reality show back in the day on cable, and yes, I saw but that. That's, that's child's yeah. play. Yeah. This I know. is like this is shot cinematically. Yeah. They chronicle the girls. Oh wow! I'm not here to, like, I'm, you know, I'm about to buy the Dallas Cowboy Barbie now. <laughs> I mean, I was about it. This show's good. It's premium okay. content. I'm definitely gonna check that out. All right, um, I just have a couple more. One is an author because I know you're a big uh, book reader. Oh. Um, I am a big book reader. I would probably read anything by Elizabeth Gilbert. Okay. 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 And then two more. Uh, Second to last is a social media platform. Oh, I'm agnostic. I'm agnostic. You know, Angie, you know, Angie, you know better than anybody else because you have seen me from the Twitter days to the Facebook days to the YouTube days to the Instagram days to the Mm -hmm. TikTok days. Like I'm basically going, um, we'll have a full circle moment. I'm going to go where the land is cheap. And I'm going to try to build fast and build a high rise ASAP. I love that. I love that. And last one is a brand. Ooh. Just any brand that you're so loyal to. I mean, I mean, okay, so this is cheesy. I literally sound like I'm 87 years old, but there's this pajama brand called Eberge. Okay. And they're a little bit, they're a little bit pricey. (laughs) <laughs> but th- it's it's like they're worth their weight in cotton. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is so soft. Like uh-huh. I look and I don't have a lot of them. But when I put it on, I'm just like, I am just feeling myself. I just like, <laughs> I just want to just rub my arms or rub my legs. And so I bought a pair for Luna. And so we have Aww. matching pajamas oh worth every God. penny. And it drives JD crazy. He thinks that we're oh, extra. Cute. And I'm like, are we extra? <laughs> or are you just jealous that you're not a part of our pajama squad? I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I love that. I love that, Jasmine. Thank you so much for talking with me today. This was so, so helpful. I have so many ideas moving forward, and I know our listeners do too. Can you tell us and everyone listening where they can find you? Yeah. I mean, since we're out here podcasting, the yeah. Jasmine Star Show on yeah, every yeah, yeah. on every podcasting platform. And then for more information, jasminestar.com. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, babe. I hope that you enjoyed watching and listening to this week's episode. If you found it interesting, well, how about we go a little bit deeper? How about I take you and invite you on a different level of this journey? How do we go from podcast watcher or listener into perhaps joining my mastermind? Yes, that is what's going on. For all information to apply, to learn more, this is going to be an opportunity for seven-figure business owners to get into a room to figure out how to expand their brand, market with a full exposed strategy, and beyond all that, scale. Scale in two ways. We're going to be talking about scaling by way of our team and scaling by way of proven systems that empower us to simply pull on a lever, let the team run with the business, and allow us to work on the business, not just in the business. Jazz, Jasminestar.com forward slash mastermind is where you will find all of this and I'll be sure to link it in the show notes. I hope you have a beautiful day. 